Okay, uh, my students said I had a particularly good lesson today um, regarding social studies, uh, which we discussed yesterday about Native Americans and how they had a sustainable lifestyle, whereas today we have an unsustainable lifestyle. Um, I asked them to estimate using a broad estimation, using their mathematical skills. How long do you think we can continue having smartphones, consuming resources, considering there's 7 billion people on the planet, and we've got good medical care, people's life expectancy is, is ballooning up to like 80, 80 years old on the average for a developed country. Um, we're using up our finite resources. Uh, how long are, is our society sustainable? And that's based on the social studies lesson of why um, Native Americans and Europeans had conflicts in America. Um, from that, we started discussing all the different possible topics they could write on today. So I don't use stock writing prompts. We try to kind of see what kids are interested in writing about. And so we do a two to three day uh, write where they take, they started in the classroom, have an introduction, details, conclusion, good grammar. Um, basic writers will write one page, advanced writers will write two pages worth double space so that we can edit if necessary. Um, but the umbrella topic is about society and its sustainability uh, and whether, I mean, you could discuss whether or, or, or have them write about whether or not it's better now or it's better later. And then we actually branched into the discussion of how humanity has a plot diagram and how in the beginning of the life cycle um, or the life, when all life began, there was just these little things and then we evolved into mankind throughout history we've had, um, or throughout time, we've had mass extinctions and we discussed how it's okay. Uh, we are in the middle of a story, in the story of the human race. Are we at the climax right now where we've, we're, we're leading to some major conflict where we um, have a mass extinction of humanity? Uh, and if so, will we be able to recover? Um, we, don't, we discussed why Native Americans had a more sustainable lifestyle, and a lot of people lament the fact that we don't live that way. But if you think about it, after we use up all the resources one way or another, or we have nuclear holocaust or a war or whatever that destroys much of our uh, uh, population, we can still rebuild. Uh, there have been six mass extinctions and one of those mass extinctions took life down to 94, 94% extinction rate. And then there was just 4% or 96% or 94%, but there was like 4 to 6% of, of the life remaining and we were, or species remaining, and we were still able to come back from that. And we still have a very diverse uh, uh, species uh, cluster or whatever. But when it comes down to it, it's like, Okay, uh, we are living this story of humanity in this plot diagram, and we're building up to something. Are we at the climax of this story? Are we still part of the rising action leading to this uh, big moment when we decide, are we going to continue? Are we going to survive as a species? And then after that climax, do we go back, like if there's a world war or whatever, and there's nuclear holocaust, we survive, and after that, we go back to a time when we'll, we'll, we'll go back to living like Native Americans because there's no more resources after the conflict, or maybe there are still resources, or have we mined them all, used everything worth using, and then we go back to living like Native Americans. And then we also discussed possibilities that, well, okay, the kids said, oh, you use up all the resources. What do we do next? Well, we mine garbage dumps because, you know, people typically throw away a lot of good stuff. We could mine garbage dumps. There's a lot of ways you can get more resources even when all the resources are used up. Um, so we discussed a lot of those things. Then we discussed what's the conclusion. Well, the, the upside or the conclusion, even if the human race is extinct or becomes extinct for our own because we became too evolved, we used up all our resources, whatever, and even then, we still have ways of surviving, even if we use up all the resources. Um, but here's the thing. What's the real, what's the real big picture? The big picture is life will continue beyond us, whether it's the meek 
when we say the meat shall inherit the earth, are we talking about the cockroaches are going to become the next, um, the next dominating society? And do they become more civilized? <clears throat> and do they, you know, they evolve into these thinking cockroaches or thinking mice or, you know, the meek when they, when they develop? Because we are the meek compared to what the dinosaurs were. They became extinct. But then we became, we're like the dinosaurs to the cockroaches. When they look up at us, they say, wow, those humans. Um, they're the cautionary tale because now once they evolve and they got universities, cockroach university, and they're looking back and they're saying, hey, you know what? There was a civilization that was intelligent before us. They had buildings. They had construction. They built all kinds of wonderful things, and they disappeared. Let's learn from them. Let's keep it simple. Let's not consume all our resources. So there's a lot of different ways that you can go with that direction. There's a lot of different things you can talk about um, based on the, the, the writing prompt of, uh, our society is life itself sacred, population explosions, planet hopping, because now, you know, we're talking about we're going to use up all the resources, let's go to Mars. Why don't we just conserve our resources here and stay on the planet Earth? But, you know, you want to keep your options open and keep pushing the technology because humans are like that. And I told the kids it's okay. We're living in this story. Maybe we're the bad guys, but it's okay because we need to push. We need to, if we're not going to be the conquerors, we're going to be the conquered. And we need to keep pushing that way until we realize maybe this is the wrong way to live. And then we change our societal workings so that we can be more sustainable like the Native Americans were. Okay, we worry about resource depletion. You know, will life go on? Of course it'll go on. Even if we're gone, the bacteria will still be around. And is that the ultimate goal? Do we have a respect for the fact that we are just a part of the life on Earth? The Earth doesn't care about life. We care about ourselves. It would be nice if we were the ones to continue on. But what if we don't deserve to continue on? I don't know. Then this is why we, uh, I mean, we, we advanced ourselves to the point where we think that we are the most important thing, but maybe we're not. Maybe we were driven to extinction because of our own greed, our own selfishness that we could I mean, there's still hope that we could stop that. And even if there isn't, if, even if we don't stop this uh, resource depletion and, you know, evolution, de-evolution that we are traveling through and, and, and writing the story of, eventually, you know, even if our story fails and we do become extinct, there will be life. I'm not anti-human, but I'm just trying to see the big picture and discuss it with the kids. And they write about that. So we'll see how it's turns out tomorrow after they've written, they started it here, they're going to finish it at home, and tomorrow we're going to see what they come up with in class anyway. I don't think I'll make a video of it, but 